It's crucial that we keep our infection rate low so we can distribute the vaccine as quickly as possible when it's ready. Governor Eric Holcomb in quarantine this weekend, but part of a group of bipartisan governors from the mid Midwest pleading with people to do their part to slow the spread of coronavirus over the holidays. Let's bring in our panel right now, starting with Adam Wren, who's a contributing editor at Politico and Indianapolis Monthly. Adam, this group of governors may have come together for this public service announcement, but they're certainly making very different decisions state by state about how to navigate the challenges that we're facing across the border in Kentucky, Illinois, Michigan, even Ohio. Some significant new restrictions announced uh, just this past week. That's right. We've seen Governor Holcomb really put the onus on local governments, uh, which is sort of the Republican philosophy uh, writ large. And, you know, whether or not that'll work is, is still to be determined. Uh, but to, to Governor Holcomb's credit, you know, he did kind of put his uh, thumb on the scale uh, earlier than many Republican governors in places like North Dakota, for example, and asked for a mask mandate in July. And so you've got, you know, countless number of lives saved in that decision. And so, you know, hopefully um, we're able to kind of move forward as a state and, and really wrap our arms around this uh, virus. And certainly they've had a lot of issues there in North Dakota and South Dakota. Let's turn to Alexander Hudson now, who's a contributor with Young Voices. You've written a lot about the need for unity in the country after this contentious election year, but all of this has really gone beyond politics too, in a way, in terms of how Americans have approached this pandemic. We're, we're very divided in some ways. We're incredibly divided, Dan. The presidential election, the pandemic, it just seems like insult to injury. And this is a time where we need more than ever to focus on what we can control, focus on the people in our lives who matter and focus on loving them. And, and for friends and family that feel lost and, and, and disappointed and, and uh, during this time, we, we need to uh, support them. And, and maybe sometimes that even means maybe not talking about politics, not talking about the pandemic. I have some, some people in my life that we just can't talk about those things and that's okay because there uh, there are more important things to talk about and um, we need to not debate strangers online no one's ever changed their mind on Twitter right. <laughs> and so this is a time where we need to build community where we can focus on affecting the things within our control yeah Robin Winston is the former state party chair for the Indiana Democrats R Robin what do you make of the political conversation he here in Indiana at the State House especially this week uh, on the issue of COVID-19 when it comes to some of the practical realities of, of how you govern in the midst of this health crisis? Well, I think uh, Speaker Houston made a definitive statement when he pointed out that most, if not all of the members of his caucus were adhering to a mass mandate and were following that protocol. Uh, we had an election where Rainwater got 12% of the vote, basically campaigning against a mass uh, mandate. Clearly that wasn't enough to put him over the top. But lastly, there's not a person that I know that is not talking about what are they going to do to address COVID-19 relative to their Thanksgiving holiday. I think that's what matters the most is people are making their own kitchen table decisions about yeah. this issue. Maybe a lot of Zoom calls uh, with, with family members, with relatives just like this. Uh, let's turn to former GOP lawmaker Mike Murphy. You served in the General Assembly. What, what do you make of the events of this past week there at the State House? I think generally reporters don't have much to talk about on Organization Day because it's photo day. The most important story of Organization Day was Senator Greg Taylor being named the first ever African-American caucus leader in the state of Indiana. That is huge news. He's a great guy. Um, by the way, I'd like to wish uh, Governor Holcomb and Janet uh, the best in, in yeah. bearing up under the... Uh, the quarantine, maybe that means they have more time to watch In Focus this Sunday. Well, there you go. In Focus, a little Netflix, whatever the case may be there on TV, right? The Colts this Sunday, wishing them the best, obviously. Uh, let's talk about the presidential election right now. Quite a week as the president's team continues uh, to try and cast doubt on the election results. Their legal efforts and attempts to find evidence of widespread fraud have been largely unsuccessful and highly controversial. This week, the president fired the man in charge of cybersecurity for the 2020 elections, a move that was criticized by lawmakers on both sides. We've not heard much pushback from Indiana's two Republican senators. This week, Senator Mike Braun wouldn't respond directly to Chris Krebs firing, but says unifying the country will depend on secure election results, in his view. I don't think that's possible until you overturn every stone out there because I think it should be in the best interest of all Americans to make sure there aren't any irregularities in a process that's so sacred to all of us. 
Krebs replacement has uh, not been announced. Uh, Adam, your reaction here to the Republican reaction, particularly, I guess, the lack of reaction so far from, from our two senators. Yeah, whether you're a Republican or a Democrat, uh, this isn't really a Rorschach, a partisan Rorschach test. Uh, you should really be ashamed of Senators Todd Young and Mike Braun and anybody else in the GOP delegation in Indiana for their failure to stand up for, for democratic norms, for their failure to stand up for uh, free and fair elections. Um, their silence speaks multitudes in this situation. Um, really, they've beclowned themselves this week by not speaking out uh, against, uh, you know, people like former New York Mayor, uh, New York City Mayor Rudy Giuliani's uh, sort of sophomoric effort to push back against uh, elections. Uh, I think, you know, the former Colts quarterback Curtis Painter was more successful uh, in his season as the backup quarterback for the for the Colts than uh, Donald Trump's uh, legal team has been. I think they're like one for 27 right now in their legal challenges. So it, it's really a shame that they haven't, um, you know, grown, grown spines and stood up for, for democracy. I, I was not expecting a Curtis Painter uh, reference on the program today. Um, Jim Banks did author uh, an op-ed this week, Mike. He's now the new chair of the Republican Study Committee. He wrote about the political dynamic for Republicans in the post-Trump era, perhaps going further than most to acknowledge uh, that reality. Uh, in, in Washington, D.C. than some of his colleagues? Well, I, first of all, I want to congratulate Jim Banks on becoming uh, chairman of the Republican Study Committee. He has a great future. And you're right. He is speaking now of Donald Trump in print in the past tense, which is good. Um, Kay Granger, a significant Republican congresswoman from Texas, the ranking member of the Appropriations Committee in the House, is saying it's time to move on. It's time to move on. And then, of course, we had Mitt Romney coming out this week with a pretty, pretty strong statement along those same lines. So I think Republicans are slowly going to come to the realization that it is time to move on. And I really don't begrudge um, Braun and, and Young their statements. They're, they're just being careful and they're looking at their base. Okay. We're going to have more on our podcast. Guys, thank you so much. Coming up, the entire NCAA tournament could be coming to Indianapolis. We'll talk about the potential impact here in the Circle City.